Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we'll be separating this cakey from the mother orchid. This is a question that I get quite a lot and finally I can show you how I would go about separating a spike cakey from a Phalaenopsis orchid. So let's start by talking about when we can separate a spike cakey from the mother orchid. If we take a look at my cakey we can see it already has a leaf, it has a pretty long root here and another one on the way. At this point I'm slightly at the edge with this cakey because he might not develop too fast. Usually I would wait for the cakey to have at least two leaves and at least three or four roots that are already about 10 centimeters long. In this way I would give the cakey more chances of growing faster and normally. The reason why I will separate the cakey earlier than I should is because I have reasons to believe this orchid is really stressed. She has a cakey here and another basil cakey on this side and her brand new leaf is not developing too good. But in normal conditions I would wait a little bit more. If you want to separate a cakey before it has any roots, chances of its survival are really slim because the cakey is really dependent on the orchid. It needs to have at least a few good healthy roots. So presuming our cakey has quite a few good roots and at least two leaves, the next step is to actually separate it from the mother orchid. For this I will use a sterilized pair of pruners. I sterilized it with alcohol and then I flamed it a little bit and I will go ahead and cut the actual flower spike below the cakey. Worst thing you can do is to try to remove the cakey or snap it off or twist it off because in that way you can damage its axis and of course the cakey will be compromised. So if you're interested in saving the cakey you should cut the flower spike. So I will cut well below the cakey at this point. Careful not to cut leaves or something else. So this is a clean cut, the cakey has a little bit of spike attached to it and now let's see how we go about potting him up. Now as you can see I left quite a lot of the spike attached to the cakey. That's a good idea because there will be some dye back and possibly some infections that can transfer to the cakey. If you leave more space and you notice an infection you can cut it away safely without actually damaging the axis of the cakey. So to prevent further problems I would try to seal off or at least sterilize this cut wound. So what I want to do is dip it into cinnamon powder. Careful do not dip the roots, do not dip the cakey itself in cinnamon, just the cut wound of the flower spike. So I need to be careful with this what I will do is just dip it into the powder and at this point we can proceed with the potting. Okay, so a good pot for the cakey is one that can accommodate its roots but also it's not super big and retains a lot of water because this cakey has aerial roots. These are not roots that are adjusted to high amounts of moisture. They would actually prefer to be very ventilated at least at this point. So a big pot might retain too much water for this cakey. Also a non-ventilated medium might be again very detrimental for the roots. I would suggest you go with bark. My medium of choice is ceramics but it's very chunky and very airy. And a medium that I would not recommend would be sphagnum moss unless you make it just very very fluffy. Compacted sphagnum moss retains a lot of water and it's also not very ventilated. And although Phalaenopsis orchids can handle high amounts of moisture, these roots are not adapted to that. Imagine they have been in the air until now so adjustment needs to be gradual because these are the only roots this cakey has and we want the roots to survive and continue to feed the cakey at least until other new roots are produced. Okay so as I was saying my medium of choice is ceramics and the pot is quite tiny as you can see. Well in comparison to my cakey it looks kind of huge but it really isn't. It dries up very very fast but as I was saying I'll try to maintain everything very 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 airy and make a gradual change. Now I am trying to keep the cut spike above the medium. In some cases it's impossible, in my case it's so and so, but I'll try to do a good job in maintaining this cut as dry as possible. And this is the finished product. My cakey is quite unstable, it really doesn't have a lot of roots, so you need to keep that in mind and be careful around the cakey. Now at this point if the medium you used is dry you can give it a good water but make sure your pot drains very well. My ceramics is already moist so there's no need for that. Remember I want to make a smooth transition 
But of course, this cakey needs to be hydrated as well, so the balance is important. I will not let this cakey get very, very dry, but I will not keep it soggy either, at least until new roots start to form, and they will be more tolerant to medium than these roots. Now, sphagnum moss can work as well, again, if you keep it very fluffy, and I do have a video on proper use of sphagnum moss. If you're interested in that, you can find it down below in the description. So, of course, sphagnum moss can be used, particularly in warm and dry environments, but just be careful with compacting it. So, alrighty, guys, this is how I would go about a cakey. Hope you found this useful. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid and plants videos, and I will see you all next time. Bye!